Welcome back to Notre Dame Stadium and the Pittsburgh Panthers and Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Over 59,000 as the Panthers in the tunnel getting ready to make their appearance on the field. Pittsburgh 1 and 3. They won their opening game in an upset over Southern Miss and then a fall under Virginia Tech, Ohio State, and the University of Louisville. Johnny Majors, the only coach to ever win two games here at Notre Dame Stadium with two different teams. He did it with Pitt, he did it with Tennessee. roaming the sideline for us today as always here at Notre Dame John Dockery with what are the important aspects of today's game Doc you know Tom as you you and uh, Chris have been mentioning Lou Holtz is putting all of the pieces of the puzzle together at the right time his inexperienced senior quarterback Kevin McDougal has been sensational his young room young running backs are emerging as stars his defense is laced with talent but that extra dimension every team needs to win a championship the kicking game that also coming together explosive producing both field position and scoring twin rockets Mike Miller the punt returner and Clint Johnson the kickoff returner how about last week against Stanford Clint Johnson returned more for 79 yards to set up a score and then this 100 plus yard dash for a touchdown to seal the victory against the Cardinals so Lou Holtz as the Irish are behind me getting ready to come out are starting to put things together on this chilly afternoon Tom Hammond they are a hot team back to you and they are gathering for their appearance the traditional exit with every player touching the play like a champion today sign which Newt Rockney first put up gathering in the tunnel behind their coach Lou Holtz and coming off that emotional payback win against Stanford 48 to 20 Stanford the team that put the final blow on their national championship hopes with a win here at Notre Dame Stadium last season. against the 40 degree temperatures here and here come the Irish. It's been a dramatic change in the weather overnight. Yesterday, the weather was in the mid 70s, sunny, high 70s, a beautiful day. Today, it's chilly. It rained overnight, as you said. The field was totally covered until 10 o'clock this morning, so it's in perfect condition right now, though you may see the wind gusting a little bit. It's blowing from left to right. It's swirling. It may affect the passing game, so we'll keep an eye on that today. Otherwise, the field is dry. The footing is good. Back to you, Tom. All right, in the Irish 5 and 0, and Chris Collinsworth, uh, Lou Holtz sort of has that gleam back in his eye again. I think he's totally shocked at what's happened to this football team this season. Such a changeover. He lost his entire backfield from a season ago. All those guys now playing in the National Football League. And then all of a sudden, somehow, unexpectedly, they knocked off Michigan, knocked off Stanford, sitting here at 5 and 0, and we're all trying to understand the national championship picture but certainly for Lou Holtz they're hoping for a Florida State win today because then they would control their own destiny as far as the national championship picture. Holtz's Irish have won the toss deferring to the second half so Notre Dame will kick off and it will receive. That's Kevin Pendergast the Irish kicker who will tee the football up and the wind at their back in this first quarter. Getting the weather changed though. <laughs> I went out for a jog this morning in my shorts. I thought I was going to die. There's Jay Jones who is deep for the Panthers. And Shawnee Major saying that for them to upset the Irish today, they're almost going to be the underdogs. Would mean Let's check the starting 
67 percent of his passes five touchdowns two interceptions Curtis Martin is the top rusher in the Big East averaging 110 yards a game and up front for the Pittsburgh Panthers it is a line led by a Reuben Brown Johnny Major says he's one of the best at that left tackle first down for the Panthers from the 21. Covered by Justin Goheen. Let's take a look at the Irish starting defensive unit. Some changes here as Thomas Knight starts at the right end and Flanagan moves inside from end to tackle. Keep your eye on Bryant Young. He leads the team in both tackles and sacks. Burt Berry gets the starting linebacker. And in the secondary, Bobby Taylor. Bobby Gray's from Coach Holmes. He said he hasn't been beaten on man this season. of three yards. Kevin Tatum got penetration from the outside linebacker spot and Martin never had a chance. Kenneth Tatum on the tackle. Kenneth Tatum is basically a defensive back that has been moved into that outside linebacker position. He's just a freshman. They had some real concerns about him, but when you make plays like that, those concerns won't last for long. So Pittsburgh facing his first crucial third down of the game. It's third and 12. The ball Thrown back, but stacking up the play and preventing further down. 
scrimmage was Tom Tumulty. Tumulty from Penn Hills, Pennsylvania. Bill Freilich was his idol growing up. In fact, he said he lived so close to Freilich that he could rock and hit his house. He was a great linebacker for Pitt and went on to the pros, and they stopped him short of the first down, so it will be fourth down, and New Holt selects to go for it. No indecision whatsoever. He sends in the short yardage offense. Back to the tailback, Sellers, the fullback. his way, passes on Looked like Pitt was going to make the play at the point of attack, but Becton simply bounced it to the outside and easily picked up the first down. This is the opening series for the Irish after Pitt punted on their first possession. Scored his first quarter with 11 35 left. forward for a slight gain. Penalty markers on the play. Kevin McDougal is learning how to be an option quarterback. When he was in high school, only ran one option play his entire career and said he didn't even like that one very much. But he is now being taught by Lou Holtz. Holding offense. A 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Some of the basic fundamentals of running the option game. The reason that Lou Holtz feels that the option game is so important is that it keeps defenses out of man-to-man -man coverage. It's almost impossible to stop the option game in man-to-man -man coverage. Oscar McBride, tight end, who has been injured, makes his first appearance for the Irish. We have Derek Mays wide to the right and to the left will be. Not a lot of emotion in Notre Dame Stadium today. We were here six times last season. Oh, the 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 Six games of Notre Dame's last season. 
season. And it seemed that every time Lou Holtz needed a big play, it was this delay out of the backfield. They simply clear everybody down the field and then slip the fullback Zellers out. It is worked time after time for Notre Dame. Offense, 10-yard penalty, a line of scrimmage, repeat first down. So every team the Panthers have played have been unbeaten. They've been out of most games in the first half, although last week against Louisville was an exception. They were in it for a while. And not off to a good start here at Notre Dame. Their first drive, three plays, consumed only 71 seconds. On their second possession, the first play. Quarterbacks don't like to run the option game. <laughs> Hamilton just buried John Ryan, but Ryan hung in there pretty good so that he could uh, get the pitch off. Watch this hit by Hamilton. I'll tell you, it makes for a long afternoon in your option quarterback. Junior Green with a catch. 
for Pitt, covered 16 yards. Well, John Ryan is a pure drop back passer, so we know he can throw the football. Nice job there by Junior Green, just finding a hole in his own. Interesting story about John Ryan is that he was really struggling during the preseason, but they diagnosed him with an asthma condition that was exercise induced. And as soon as they treated that condition, John Ryan began playing much better football. Curtis Martin rushed for 175 yards last week against Louisville. That moved him into 13th place on Pitt's all-time career rushing list. Just 195 yards away from number 10 spot on that list. He's a good football player. We told you at the top he accounts for 40% of the offense. He's also this team's leading receiver. He has eight career 100-yard rushing games. And he's given the Panthers a first down at their own 47. Flags down and the play clock has expired, so he hit its own worst play enemy. Play of the game, offense. It'll be first and 15 for the Panthers. Major's not happy about it. Major's has kept his sense of humor, though. He says when friends call and ask him how he's doing, he says, well, I'm able to sit up and take nourishment and turn on a projection. <laughs> He's the greatest. I played for him at the Japan Bowl, an all-star game, and he was fishing around looking for somebody to return kicks, which is always popular duty in an all-star game. I was sitting there looking at my shoes, and he said, I want to thank Mr. Collins for the ball. Makes a nice cut, gets almost to midfield before he's cracked down hard. As the Irish defense recovers, that was Justin Goheen, who is from Wexford, Pennsylvania. That's the Pittsburgh area. He had two years high school in Philadelphia, then moved to Wexford and was a teammate of Paul Fela at North Allegheny High School. Together they won the 4A state championship. He said in eighth grade he saw a picture of Ned Bolker, a Notre Dame linebacker, making a flying tackle on the cover of Sports Illustrated. He said it stuck in his mind all his life, and that's why he wanted to come to Notre Dame. almost to perfection after he worked off the block of Junior Green. Wide receivers aren't really known for their blocking ability, and uh, Junior Green is living up to that great tradition. Thank you very much. You prevented me from having to say that about your playing career. And my blocking ability. Is it easier to defend the option when you see it in practice? I mean, uh, Stanford, they hurt us with that play. We fully expect. 
expect to see it against Pittsburgh today, but obviously not enough on that third and very long situation. Quick check of some of the other scores there as Cochran had a beautiful game. Five. Nothing, but there have been great moments for the Panthers here on this Notre Dame Stadium turf. One of them, 1976. Johnny Major says one of the most electrifying plays he's ever seen. Tony Dorsett, first play of scrimmage for the Panthers, rambles over 60 yards on a simple dive play, putting the Panthers on their way to victory over Notre Dame, 31-10, in the year that the Panthers would claim the national championship. And this Pittsburgh team, Anthony Dorsett, a sophomore. Wide receiver, the son of Mike. First down pass to Mays, complete for a first down, tracked down by Whaley and Williams. And McDougal has hit five of his first six passes this afternoon. That one went for 18. Derek Mays is averaging 21 yards per catch, and you see why, because once he catches the football, half the fun is just started because he can really fly. He turns it up the field. Defense offside. The only team that's going to stop Notre Dame today is Notre Dame. I decline. First down. Teaching him the technique of running the option that 
early in the season, he was just sort of floating the ball out there on the pitch, but had to work on turning that thumb under and, and flipping the ball so it's a little more of a direct pass. Google's making his great strides with the option. Just a flip of the wrist. Hit defending that one well. He only got a yard. Hayes Clark down at the bottom of the stack for the Panthers as we approach the end of the first quarter. And that's the end of the first period on a cool and rainy afternoon at Notre Dame Stadium. Irish leading the Panthers 7 0. And we'll be back after these messages from your local station. Ready to start the second quarter at Notre Dame Stadium. Irish leading Pittsburgh 7 0. And right now in the middle of an eight play drive. This is the Panther defense, he was hurt. He hurt his shoulder earlier in the season. We really didn't expect to see him today. Maybe Kevin McDougal didn't expect to see him either. Oh, that's oh, a bad ground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you got to give the underdog a little shot. They're 40 point underdogs in this one. Why not? thought that Greg Lane was going to drop back. When he rolled up, the receiver made the right read. The rookie, the freshman quarterback, Pete Gonzalez, did not. So a 29-yard return to the interception from the ball down by Marlon Gonzalez.
Second rushing touchdown of the season for the Pittsburgh native Marie Summers on a 19-yard run. Pendergast for the extra point. Appreciated job in America is the holder. You only get noticed if you do something wrong. That time, a good snap. Fela just blew it. Sellers scored, and his former high school teammate, Paul Fela, fumbles the hold. Beautiful job of blocking up front by the Irish, led by Tim Ruddy, the All American candidate at center. Those are the kind that you like if you're running back nice and easy. Notre Dame converts the interception 13 0. The trees on this beautiful campus beginning to assume their autumn mantle of brilliant colors, although muted somewhat by the slate gray skies of this rainy afternoon. As Pendergast kicks off for the Irish, excuse me. Short. And a return of to the 29 yard line. Well, we saw Pete Gonzalez pitch an interception last time after John Ryan hit four of his first five passes. John Dockery, who they have a quarterback this time? Yeah, John Ryan's going back in you assume. He was just talking to Johnny Majors. The reason that Gonzalez was in before is that Johnny Majors was not real happy with Ryan for those delay of games, clock penalties. Very unhappy. Sat him down and it cost pick. Back to you. All right, Doc. They were moving the football, but they had that drive. Four times for 25 yards, and two of them were for delay of game. Ryan had to sit. It's only back to the line of scrimmage. He wasn't too happy with those delay of game penalties. Probably wasn't real thrilled with that interception either. You know, when you get out there and you're a freshman, you, know, I mean, you, really, you think about it. You come in and you played in high school, maybe in front of four or five thousand people on Friday night, and then all of a sudden you're there for the first time and don't get to die on national television. Although that career, he says maybe eventually to get his PhD 
I'm sure that'll be put on the last end in the NFL if I, my suspicions are correct. Ask him if a mechanical engineer could put together those kids' Christmas stories. He's still not sure. <laughs> it takes several degrees in that. I don't think a PhD is enough. It'd be worth four years of college if I could do that one. Third and short coming up for the Irish. Clock inside the 10 minute mark, first half. certainly proved that thus far. First down, first down. I the, of the football. Kinder from East Lansing, Michigan, a huge Michigan State fan, and one of the uh, most gratifying moments of his young career was being named MVP as Notre Dame beat the Spartans with many friends and family in attendance. So his favorite player growing up, he was a huge Redskins fan. He loved John Riggins. <laughs> no similarity with no, that. John Riggins never won any trackers. and get what gain he can, which is three or four yards with Hayes Clark making sure he goes out. He checks the score some other games as the Aggie is pitching a shutout so far. You know, the interesting thing for Kevin McDougal is he's played so well this season, but he's still battling against Ron Paulus. Paulus is the freshman sensation out of Pennsylvania that so many people are talking about. He's going to be ready for the game and there's some speculation that Paulus may be the quarterback for the Cowboys. He's got a first down. He's to the 45-yard line. Sumner on the tackle, but a first down for the Irish. McDougal had uh, two horrible scrimmages for the Irish in the preseason, and uh, Coach Holtz came to him and said, uh, "If you have a third one as bad as those two, Hollis will be the starting quarterback." Here he runs the option. Yeah, McDougal in those scrimmages were he was 13 of 27, no touchdowns and five interceptions. Paulus was 24 of 37, five touchdowns and zero interceptions. But then he broke his collarbone, so it was left to Kevin McDougal, as we talked about earlier. He's been sensational, but Skip Holtz, the offensive coordinator, told me this Paulus is a He said, I've never seen a freshman that has done the things that he did in those first two scrimmages. McDougal raises up and calls a timeout. He'll confer with Coach Holtz, and we'll take a break with the Irish leading 13-0. Notre Dame leading Pitt 13-0. We've been talking about Ron Paulus, who was National High School Player of the Year a year ago, the freshman quarterback for the Irish who is on the sidelines with an injury. Before the game, he talked with our John Dockery. I'm hoping to be back possibly for the Navy game and, and, and hopefully for the Florida State game. When you come back, would you expect to play? Well, you know, that's gonna, that's going to be a hard call. It's going to it's going to depend on how everybody's playing at the time and how I'm playing at the time, and you know that, that's that's really a tough call right now. Well, good luck to you. All right, thanks a lot. Paulus watching the game from the coaching booth upstairs, learning from the assistant coaches. They thought that they game, though they don't normally redshirt players, would redshirt him to save his eligibility. The option. Short of the 45 yard line, tackled by Maurice Williams and John McCray. And uh, when we talked to Coach Holtz about Paulus, would you redshirt him or would you play in this season? He said, Well, we look at it this way if he's as good as we think he is, he's going to be gone after four years anyway. And if he's not as good as we think he is, we won't need him for a fifth year. He said, I don't care if he goes. <laughs> I thought that was a great line. Job is Kevin McDougal's right now, and after those two bad scrimmages, McDougal came to Coach Holtz and said, "I know I can lead this team to his goal. I just have to work harder to prove it." Benton from the tailback spot will pick up the Irish first down. McCray with a second consecutive tackle as the sod comes out of McDougal's face mask. And one final note on Ron Paulus. A lot of people criticized Lou Holtz for playing him against the first unit defense. That's when he broke the collarbone. But Holtz 
retort was that, hey, if I'm thinking about playing this kid against Michigan and Florida State and Stanford and Pittsburgh, I've got to find out what he can do. And so he took it in there. And he Eighth play of the drive and the first pass falls incomplete. Kerplevich is playing because of an injury to Oscar McBride, who was expected to be the tight end this year. He made his first start against Michigan. I don't. It's uh, only three passes of the year against Michigan State. Holtz was describing the Irish passing attack to us yesterday, and he said that Tom Clements and Skip Holtz have installed one of the most sophisticated. That's part of the excitement that Tim Ruddy, the center, was talking about with the freshman Randy Kinder. When he gets on a roll, he can absolutely fly 4-4, four, 4-3 four, four, speed in the 40-yard dash. That's as fast as anybody you'll find in the National Football League. Two hands on the ball. Exciting young player. He's going to have a chance to establish some rushing marks before he's finished. Already 30 yards on five carries. but somebody really did a number on the offensive line for Notre Dame as they just plowed them back. Looked like Jeremy Akers, number 76, just got plowed back in the backfield, and Ray Zellers was unable to get the handoff. Coming, or Miller coming down in here and 
making the blocks. There's a huge hole. Nice kick out block by Chad Dutz, I believe it is. Now that's Maurice Washington. Nice big hole, and that's unexpected. That's as good as As he gets another into Notre Dame territory, can have 100 yards before that play, and Martin combined for 88 yards of it. Brian McGee on that tackle for Notre Dame. The other thing that this drive is doing for Pittsburgh is it's winding down the clock. If you're Johnny Majors and you're playing on the road against the Fighting Irish, you do not want a long game. You want to shorten the game. Give your team a chance in the fourth quarter. If they can put some points on the board right here, they would feel like they're very much in. And then the others come to get him. Knight was the first man to hit him. He got away from him. Then the others arrived. And, uh, it didn't turn out to be much. Thomas Knight. Number 96 is getting his first start for the Fighting Irish. He's the one that got the penetration up the field. He replaced Oliver Gibson as a starter. He's more of a finesse player, according to Bryant Young. He's plays with speed and finesse, and you saw him use his quickness there. One thing for sure, Johnny Majors knows his strengths. Martin has just the last six big plays. Of it, so did Ronaldo win the second sack of the game for the Irish defense. Part of the problem that Pittsburgh is having offensively is the only way that they can throw the football is to keep people in and block. So there's not a lot of people out in this pattern. Bill Davis was open going across the middle, but by that time, John Ryan and simply went out of tonight. He's done a great job of protection by that offensive line. For Sets up the screen. Nice play by Dave Christopher. Nothing Irish with 117 left in the first half from Notre Dame Stadium. Hope you'll stay with us at halftime. We'll have the Prudential Update Show. Jim Lampley bring you scores and highlights, college football around the nation. And Jim's also going to be joined by Peter Vesey. They'll take a look at the new balance of power in the NBA after the retirement of Michael Jordan. It's all coming up. The Prudential Update Show at halftime from New York with Jim Lampley. I say he'll be there. As now Notre Dame fans around the country are beginning to have their discussion in their living rooms about Ron Paulus. The second interception by Kevin McDougal 
just a bad throw. Kevin McDougal with the mistake in judgment. It was his own defense, and he tried to throw into it. It was just simply a misread. Should have never been thrown. Miller only 5'7", and couldn't quite get up high enough to prevent the interception. not always been a pleasant month for Lou Holtz at Notre Dame. Especially in the first two weeks. He's had problem problems with Pittsburgh and Stanford for the most part. The Irish 5 and 0 oh, trying to go to six heavily favored over Pitt and the Panthers hanging in there chiefly due to three Notre Dame first half turnovers. Seconds here. Well, what a nice play by Oliver Gibson. He was named the high school defensive player of the year by the USA Today. Also, the Illinois player of the year had 187 tackles and 14 sacks. He just got banned at the offensive line on that one. And the first half will come to an end before the Panthers can run another play. So the Irish played by turnovers in the first half and Pitt staying close. John Dockery is with John Majors. Thank you, John Hammond. Uh, Johnny, how would you assess the first half? I think we're playing about as well as we can play. Uh, we made we're making too many mistakes, uh, but we're hanging tougher. Uh, we got a couple of three penalties and a delayed game penalties. Uh, and because I don't blame a freshman quarterback with throwing an interception, you know, I don't remember what it's like as a freshman, and he's in an unusual circumstance right here in South Bend, Indiana. But we decided to play him this week. And I don't blame him for that. But we're in the ball game. They want to play a football team. And we're not getting a lot done, but my guys, we're playing a little bit better week after week. So far, we've got another hand to go. I better keep my mouth shut. Thank you, Johnny. Good luck to you. <laughs> All right. Classic. The Panthers are hanging tough at Notre Dame Stadium. We've completed the first half, and it's 13 nothing Notre Dame over Pittsburgh. Now let's go to Jim Lampley in New York for the Prudential Update Show. Welcome back to Notre Dame Stadium with the Irish leading the Pitt Panthers 13 to nothing as we get ready for the second half. And just a few moments ago, John Dockery talked with Notre Dame coach Lou Holtz. Coach, what did you say to him in halftime? Well, just that we had three turnovers the first half. Two of them were deep in our territory. You can't, can't do those things. We need to play the run a little bit better on defense, but predominantly turnovers, execution. Did you think they came out flat? I, I, you know, they're, they're 18, 19 years of age. They want to win. Sometimes things don't work well. You know, if you turn the ball over three times, uh, that you can't do it. If you fumble a snap, th those are things you cannot do. But they played hard. They've competed. And we aren't a perfect football team. We need to come out and play better the second half. Good luck in the second Thank half. Thank you. And the three turnovers by Notre Dame keeping Pitt in the game. Here are the numbers, Chris. And really the three turnovers also the time of possession look at that Pittsburgh 17 and a half minutes Notre Dame got off to such a great start with that first drive right down the field but then for the rest of the half really you take away the interception by the freshman Pete Gonzalez that led to the immediate touchdown by Zellers or this is a seven to nothing ball game right now. Notre Dame deferred so they will receive the kickoff to open the second half and this is the best kickoff return team in America. Fighting Irish. 37.9 yards. And Johnson had the 100 yard kickoff return against Stanford a week ago. Actually 105 yards and got credit for him. Different approach from Out of bounds on the kick by Leon. It'll go out of bounds around the 11 yard line of Notre Dame. Greg Lane tried to field it, and his momentum carried him right out of bounds. So, not a very uh, pretty 
returned by the nation's best in that department. Yeah, I really get the feeling that Lou Holtz did not want his team to use up too much of the emotional energy in this game. And Paul Thaler will open the second half at quarterback for the Irish. Thaler, the junior from Pittsburgh, is playing in his fifth game here today. He opens the second half for McDougal. Tumble T on the tackle with Clark. There's that play again, the delayed pass. 
pass to the fullback that's been so successful. This is what they do. It's against his own defense. They let everybody else clear. Zellers waits, 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 and then just comes out of the backfield. I, I haven't seen anybody stop that play yet for the Fighting Irish. And when you're working against his own, to be honest, almost impossible. Yeah, no, the fullback isn't just a blocker. He's very much involved in the offense. <laughs> Straight ahead on the option, Mark Edwards, the fullback for a short game. This Pittsburgh defense is led by their linebacker, Tom Tumblety, and he has really struggled after being named the, the freshman of the year, his freshman year. Came back last season on opening day, tore a pectoral muscle in his chest and missed the entire season. His comeback this year, you'll see a big pad on his elbow. He tore up a bursa sack. He hasn't been healthy since that great freshman year. Full start offense. The full start on the Irish will set him back five yards. It was Mark Edwards who got a head start and uh, he was whistled for it. So this Irish drive that began way back on the 11-yard line now receives a five-yard oh. setback. Full start, offense. I was telling you about Tumulty, though. He had uh, came out in that first game. See the pad on his elbow? Against Southern Miss, he had 17 tackles, a, a sack, and two interceptions in that game. But he got back to his dorm room that night, and the elbow just exploded on him. And he had to go to the hospital, had a staff infection in there. They wanted to do surgery again on him. And he said, absolutely not to his location. Knocked out of bounds at the 30. You can see the Fighting Irish just aren't settled with that option play. That time, Becton was way too close to Paul Phelan on the pitch. See, Phelan turned for the pitch, and Becton's right beside him. I mean, they're lucky they didn't come away with the fumble. The Fighting Irish have always run that option play so well. The Blue Holtz has just been pulling his hair out this season and trying to get this team organized with that play. Adrian Gerald in the game, sent by the right hand Dawson in the slot. for the Fighting Irish on this option play. They're working on it, working on it. They want to get it down. But you can see Pittsburgh had three men outflanked as the play started to develop. They tackled the fullback Zaylers, and that allowed Johnny Baker's squad to get wide and make the stop. This is a football game now. Big play by the Pitt defense. 7.58 left in the third, 13-0 Notre Dame. John Major says one of the greatest comebacks he's ever been associated with was right here at Notre Dame Stadium, 1991. His Tennessee team trailing Notre Dame at one time, 31-7. But they launched a furious comeback, and the game came down to this. Rob Leonard of Notre Dame, a field goal attempt, partially blocked, no good. And Tennessee, once trailing 31-7, comes back to win it, 35-34. Down only 13 nothing. Could Majors be thinking of similar heroics to that? Sanders and the Irish. Leaves his way for five yards on first down. Stopped by Maurice Williams. Joey Majors is not intimidated coming in to Notre Dame Stadium. You see, he has the third best record in the history of any coach among the active coaches in college football. The second guy there will be the next one. <laughs> Notre Dame has clearly been the class of this football game. They dominated the line of scrimmage, really both lines of scrimmage, but 
they haven't been able to put it away. They've taken the ball down inside the 30 yard line, had turnovers, been stopped, stopped on fourth down. And they just continue to keep Pittsburgh in the football game. Zeller's first down run actually was close enough for that measurement and he picks up the first down by the will play in the game with his uh, tight end Alton Maiden converted defensive player. There's the final score Florida State 28 10 over Miami. They get rid of the uh, Miami Hex and 28 10 victory and Florida State set to come in and make Colts as Irish here later in the season. And Zellers with a short game. Tuttle on the tackle for the Panthers a bit. And the thing that that win by Florida State means is that Notre Dame, should they win here today, would move up to number three. And because they play Florida State later in the season, if they can win there, they can into that key position of being either number one or number two in the nation so that they can get into that final game, the championship game in the NCAA, so they would control their own destiny the rest of the way now. as he falls forward with Doug Whaley wrapped around his ankles. And Paul Fela is a baseball player. He's a starting shortstop on the Notre Dame MCC Championship baseball team. Hit 325 as a freshman and was named the newcomer of the year after leading the conference in triples. Obviously, he has a good arm as a, as a shortstop. He's playing in the baseball team of the NCAA Tournament Regional Final. Just missed on a trip to the College World Series. That time, Beckton coming out of the wing spot to make the reception. Now he's the tailback and gets the Sumner. Third and goal for the Irish from the 10 yard line. Hit trying to hold one more time. Remember, first series of this quarter. And on a fourth down play. Third and goal for the 10. You there, threw it away. Halepin was coming with a rush. 
And Fela had to unload it. And on fourth down, the Irish will settle for the field goal attempt. Jesus has to be excited for this defense. Remember, this is the same team that gave up 63 points on two different occasions this season to Virginia Tech and Ohio State. And they have done a great job today in keeping their game out of the end zone. Kevin Pendergast on to attempt the field goal. Field goal. So his numbers on the season. Seven yard attempt is good. A bittersweet score for the Irish. They have to settle for three, but they're up 16 zip. left in the third and this is probably as close as Pitt has been to an opponent since their opening game win against Southern Miss. 16 nothing North Bay. They've got to open it up now. Totally and 445 left in the third quarter. Done a good job of keeping this one close, but now you have to take a shot at win. Just at about the 16-yard line. Well, in 1956, Paul Horning of Notre Dame won the Heisman Trophy, beating Johnny Majors of Tennessee, who finished second right now. John Dockery's with Paul Horning. Doc? Thank you, Tommy. Uh, yes, uh, Tom Hammond was just telling us about the 56 Heisman and the fact that you beat Majors. I don't know about that. You were on a losing team, and Majors maybe think that he should have gotten it. He actually thought he should have won the, won the Heisman, and maybe, well, he should have, but... I thought Tommy McDonald should have won it, or Jim Brown. Yeah. I was quite surprised myself. Let's watch this play before we come back to it. Curtis 
Martin, the star running back from Pittsburgh. Three. They finish one, two in high school. We have a first down their at the 22. Respective cities, and he says they're still very good friends. They were in contact this week. We'll see what Watch what uh, Martin is doing in this game. Two-yard gain on first down. Just such a weapon when you can take the football and just run it right at the people. Like Eight two. We've seen Pittsburgh foul there all day, but this Notre Dame team and that offensive line, an interesting stat. Joe Moore, the offensive line coach, in the five years that he's been here, and he ranked the offensive line. Disparity in second half yards. Right Dawson to the 15 of Pitt. That'll be short of the first down. David Sumner right again covering for Pittsburgh, and Sumner is doing a good job of the younger man. I think these guys are having a little trouble throwing the football today, and you see the receivers looking a little hesitant as it's coming there. There's really a wind that's been whipping around the stadium all day, very cool, very damp day. It's been difficult to throw the Kentucky and we went up there and we thought we were going to die. It was so cool. We couldn't throw it. We couldn't catch it. It seemed like we fumbled more often and those kids from Florida State when they come here later in the season, they're going to be in for a win. Two, two, one, two, go back, Sideline. 
She's looking for the clip. Is she? Silas now back at quarterback for the game. Ferguson, the other quarterback, one of the three we've seen today. Wide receiver now on the screen. Yep. There's a false start with the pit offense. Gonzalez, remember, had a brief stint at quarterback through an interception Good first ball. half. Full start. Offense. Please reset the clock to 33 seconds. Let's go down to the sideline now. John Dockery. Uh, thank you. Heisman Trophy winners everywhere around this today. Johnny Lujak was here. Paul Horney had to leave, but, uh, you know, finishing up on that point we made before, he said that if anyone can rebuild Pitt, it can be uh, Johnny Majors. But Angelo Bertelli, 1943 National Championship Heisman Trophy uh, winner then. What was Frank Leahy like as a coach? He was your coach then. Oh, Frank Leahy was an absolutely great coach. He was a perfectionist. He was a very serious guy. And uh, we were so lucky to have this caliber of a man here at that time. We will be watching the flea flicker here in a flag. Angela, getting back to that 43 team, I know that you won the Heisman that year only playing six games. What happened? What happened? I think that they were saying thank you, John, for a combination of uh, 1941 and 1942. And uh, the fact that it was wartime and they took me into the service and uh, the voters went my way and I was very thankful for it. Well, congratulations to you. Thanks for joining us. Tom? All right, Doc. This is the 50th reunion for that 1943 national championship team. Coach Leahy created quite a controversy that year when he switched from the old Notre Dame box offense that Newt Rockley had installed. All he did was win the national championship. And he, uh, Player out of bounds. I think it was Maurice Washington that got the pitch, or was it Martin? We talked about Ryan Le Leahy. Lou Holtz was really very upset that he got injured. He said Leahy had really made some progress in that offensive line, and he was going to be a big loss for us. Well, the penalties have been awfully costly to pit throughout the game. Illegal motion, offense, five-yard penalty. Probably a result of the uh, wide variety of players going in and out. Johnny Majors has pulled out all the stops today. Gonzalez, the freshman quarterback, has been in. He's had back his backup quarterback, Ferguson, to the wide receiver. His big trip play got screwed up, too. <laughs> For Notre Dame about to move up in the polls and go to 6 and 0 on the season. You're in the fourth quarter, 13 36, and Florida State already has beaten Miami. They'll remain number one and unbeaten, heading to that November 13th date here against Notre Dame, which will be on NBC. And Skip Holtz has a brother in law who's a student at FSU. He wanted some tickets to the FSU Notre Dame game, and Skip said, only if you agree to wear Notre Dame garb and cheer for the Irish. His fraternity brothers got wind of that and tied him naked to a tree and painted him D on his chest. So he's going to be here and he paid the price. Defensive player Maurice Williams. 
Derek Mays is really turning into a very serious Seen so many Again, Ray Kinder, 31 yards the without being touched. Jay Jones is the injured Pitt Panther player. Watch the block on the right side. That's, uh, that's the freshman Mark Edwards that made the great block out there. Happy to make that comment for Mark Edwards out of. Norwood near the Cincinnati area. Beautiful block, and they've been talking about it. They said he's he's not the fast, doesn't uh, not the fastest player in the world, but just continues to make plays for us. They say that uh, learning to do the other things, the blocking and so on, the deception, do something other than carry the football. The biggest adjustment these freshmen must make. Kinder has done it pretty well. He said it wasn't easy, but holds praise his ability to do that. And there, Edwards shows you that he can block as well as carry the football. And you notice that the players on the field know who made the play. Randy Kinder will get the credit in the newspaper tomorrow, but it was Mark Edwards that made that one happen. But Kinder will take it. That's his first college touchdown. Set up, of course, by the 55-yard pass McDougal's longest of the season to Derek May. He's had an 80-yard reception earlier from Paul Pendergast takes on the extra point, and now the round is on. All Pitt can do is say, hold in there. They trail by 30. minutes left in the game. A slow start for the Irish, but they're pouring it on the Panthers now at 30 to nothing. And Pendergast has the ball teed up. Play 86. Got to the 16. You know, so was written and talked about that book that was written. About Lou Holtz and the Notre Dame program this offseason, but if you read it, you know it was mostly the quotes from the players that we got to work for here at Notre Dame. And the problem that all college football coaches face is the fact that they have to be two completely different personalities when they're going into the players' homes to recruit and to talk to the players. Be Mr. Joe Hill, Bill Cosby type of thing. As they went to the counter by Jeremy Sample. Because you have to recruit and you have to get the kids to the various schools. And then when the kid that eventually like shows Jeremy up at Sample. Notre Dame or at Florida or Syracuse or wherever the case might be, now all of a sudden Lou Holtz has to be a general parent, he has to be a football coach. And he's not that warm, friendly guy that they first met in their home. So and all these kids that come here are all-stars or all-Americans or something. And if things don't work out, I'm sure they're hard feelings. Exactly. Everywhere in the Billy West replacing Martin in the backfield. The freshman from Smithfield, Ohio, on the draw play. Tackled by Anthony Peterson and Jeremy Sample. Peterson seeing action for the first time since he was injured in the opening game against Northwestern. I read the book this weekend, or at least parts of it. I read about a couple of chapters and started looking for my receipt to get my money back. But the, the, the biggest, the biggest claim in that book that I saw, and I'll tell you. Uh, uh, short hops, the intended receiver, Junior Green. But the biggest claim in that book against Lou Holtz that I read is that he was supposed to have spit in the face of a player. And yes, you know me, I'll go right in, I gotta ask him. I said, I said, Lou, did you ever spit in the face of a player? 
They just said, Chris, absolutely not. You don't live like I've lived for as long as I've lived, and then all of a sudden change with one player, and I'm going to spin this. They said, Oh, great! Despite the gunmetal gray skies of the afternoon, Pitt and Notre Dame renewing their rivalry. The rivalry that began in 1909. <laughs> tackled by Maurice Williams. What kind of gray sky was that again? <laughs> you are poetic. You know that, don't you? You're something else. Only a 30 to nothing game. Charlie Ward doing his thing as always. It'll bring up an interesting matchup when they come to Notre Dame. Kevin McDougal, who is from Pompano Beach, Florida. Charlie Ward, the excellent quarterback slash point guard for the Seminoles. Only question about Charlie Ward is he a better football player or basketball player? Has just become so accomplished in the pocket and throwing the football, they go to that shotgun formation and Dame using the shotgun a time or two with McDougal today. Charlie Ward, if you're interested against Miami today, was 21 for 31, 256 yards passing and a touchdown. He also rushed 17 times, or seven times for 19 yards and one touchdown. And the wheels are going to have to fall off for Charlie Ward not to win the Heisman Trophy this year. And the Joy Center is pleased to announce the Walmart Olympic and Growth Class Winter Skaters offense has been almost unstoppable all season. 550 yards a day. But this Notre Dame defense is really starting to come into its own. Here in the Michigan coach already said he thought it was one of the best he'd seen. Getting better and better as the season progresses. So we're looking ahead in those cold Saturday afternoons in uh, Notre Dame, Indiana. And they'll have Anthony Peterson, the middle linebacker back. Bursick should be back by then, so the defense should be improved as well. But the Irish have to negotiate BYU and Southern Cal and Navy before that match against the Southern. BYU undefeated. Now three as Fela didn't get much, but just enough for the first down. I don't believe Notre Dame has punted all day long. Let's go down to the sideline and John Dockery. You know, Tom, seldom a university has two movies made about him. We all know about Newt Rockney, Notre, you know, All-American, all that. And, uh, of course, there's a new movie out now called Rudy. And, Rudy, it's your story. Rudy Rudiger with me right now. Tell me, in a nutshell, what the story's about. Okay. Uh, Angela Pizzo and Dave Osbach got together. We made the decision to make our universal story. It's about a dream and not giving up. It's about finding out about yourself and going for what you believe in. I, uh, Randy Kinder just made a nice gain on the ground. <laughs> Going back to that, what, what is the message for people? It's not really a football story. No, it goes beyond football. Football is a metaphor. Notre Dame's a canvas for the movie. And we wanted to relate to everybody, especially people who are giving up on their dreams or giving up on themselves. This story kind of promotes the fact that don't give up. Keep going for it. You didn't give up and it worked for you. I know it opened this week in South Bend around the country. It opens up October 13th and then around the country on, on a national level on October 22nd. Well, good luck to you. Now, this didn't just happen overnight for you, did it? No, it happened in eight years. <laughs> eight years to get it done. Tom, back to you and Chris. Thank you. All right, Doc. Uh, Paul Fela's sister was in that movie, as a matter of fact, the Irish quarterback. 
They shot the big moment of that movie right here last year at halftime during one of the games where Rudy got in the game and made a tackle or something. I can't remember exactly what he did. North 52! North 52! Close to it. A little short of the first down, Doug Whaley, the tackle. Skip Holtz, when I was talking to him yesterday, said that this is the hardest working team that he has ever been around. So a lot of people thought we'd have a letdown after the Michigan win, but these kids came back and worked even harder. I, I think that they got tired of hearing how this was a team that couldn't compete for a national championship, that it was a rebuilding year for their game. They're certainly beginning to prove people wrong. Straight ahead for yardage is Mark Edwards, tackled by Dale Seagraves. It'll be a first down for the Irish. Well, Johnny Majors knew it was going to be tough when he returned to Pitt, and he said it's even been a little tougher than he thought, but his team did all they could do today. He asked them to fight hard and hope something good happened, and uh, they did hang in there and uh, fight as hard as they could. And Majors said he was real fortunate in that he played and was around two great program builders in his formative years. His dad, Shirley, he took two high school teams and made them powers, then went to Sewanee, the University of the South, and did the same. Gordon Wyatt, who was his coach at the University of Tennessee, so he was a great deal from those two gentlemen. Won his dad, and uh, he expects that he'll be able to turn Pitt around, and uh, most people in college football uh, would agree with that. You can see what he did in rebuilding the first time, just four years to a national championship. 17 of Major's 25 teams have gone to bowl games, including 11 of his last 12. So he's a guy that knows how to build a football program. The first recruiting class that he ever had at Pittsburgh included the great Tony Dorsett. So if he can find some players like that out there, it shouldn't take long. Great college Well, take the replay, Chris, and then I'll get it. My initial thought here was just crossing my mind. I wonder if we're running into a quarterback controversy type situation now with the way that Paul Fela has played in the second half. He has really ignited this Notre Dame offense. <laughs> 508 to 110. Majors are the great uh, college tailback in the single wing in Tennessee. He said being a tailback is great. You got to do everything you did as a kid. Safety on defense. <laughs> Robert Farmer. Did he get in? Yes, touchdown. Robert Farmer, the freshman from Bowling Brook, Illinois, with his second college touchdown. is on the sideline thinking, just give me Robert Farmer or Ray Zales or Dean Lyon or Randy King in here with these kids. And I tell you, Notre Dame's so deep, they can run so many different people at you as they crank up the band again. Marsh on the extra point. It's all Notre Dame. Here's the touchdown by Farmer. Notre Dame, a 38 and a half point favorite, up 37 nothing on Pittsburgh. Just under six and a half minutes left in the game. The Irish offense, 520 yards today. Most of them on the ground. Marsh with the shot. And a turn by Caliccio. Well, we finally get a chance to mention Anthony Dorsett's name, but uh, not exactly how he like to have it mentioned, he got a chance to trip up his own man that time. Oh, it has in his eyes, doesn't he? You see Anthony Dorsett, number 12 here, is going to try and get in the picture to make a block. And, well, I would imagine even Dad did that once or twice. Oh, he's been in the minus category. 
Gonzalez, the freshman quarterback, colliding with Chris Patton on the attempt to hand off. And it's uh, poor, poor Johnny Looney Majors. Tunes right now. You know, Johnny pits. Majors has seen the best in the country, and he's been through these rebuilding processes. And he knows, I mean, this is a football team that they at one time took out an ad in the newspaper to try and find players. <laughs> they got an ad and said, come on out. Eight of one. But you can play at Notre Dame or at, uh, at Pittsburgh. We could use the help. There are 29. A first class football team by most uh, observers reckoning. Kalich Gio with the carry for the Panthers. Oliver Gibson in the tackle. And Anthony Peterson, number 49, the starting linebacker at the beginning of the season who was out with the knee injury is now in the ball game. Rick Menner told me yesterday, didn't know if they were going to try and work him in today or not. Said he just, I just have a feeling, you know, the doctors told me he's okay, and then he can, but he's just not Anthony Peterson yet. You know, we see him come back. So, uh, we got And at times, my defensive linemen like Bryant Young will get frustrated on the field because they can't always go get the quarterback. Right. Right. feel like in college football, if you stop the run, on a much more consistent basis. Season, the team that was searching for answers for replacements to the stars that had departed, and they will go six and zero oh and move up, most likely to number three in the nation. Yeah, you know, Jeff Burris, who just made that play, also made the play of the game against Purdue. He came up with a big third quarter hit on quarterback Matt Pike, who fumbled. Brian Hamilton picked it up, and that was on the day it was wet, it was cold, it was raining, and the Irish just didn't get anything. Mentioned has had 
several outstanding players. Heisman Trophy winner Tony Dorsett. And this man, nice haircut, Mike hey, Ditka. Hey. He went both ways, did Ditka. There is a sack. And on offense, here's a catch. You couldn't tackle the guy. Check him out. <laughs> looking good. Looking spelt, too. Look at him in that uniform. Well, his haircut's better. His wardrobe is up for a question on some of the outfits he's worn on NFL Live. We'll see what he has on tomorrow when he joins Jim Lampley, Will McDonough, and O.J. Simpson to kick off our NFL coverage at 12.30 Eastern time. It's kind of like the, he's a pit, huh? He's kind of like the man of white now of television. You, know, you just tune in to see what he's wearing. I hope he's not listening, and if you see him, sort of. The gain of one yard on the play, the tackle for Notre Dame made by Sim Stokes. Well, this game on its way to being uh, one of the largest margins of the game. Also the Colts coached Irish team, but not unexpected today, we should add. <laughs> As we did in the opening, uh, the words of Johnny Majors, this pit team is undermanned and all right with schedule. The lineup next against Syracuse as the uh, and they still have what West Virginia and Miami to go, so uh, it's not going to be much fun for Johnny Majors, even the rest of the way. Syracuse at home, then at West Virginia, who's undefeated, I believe, still depending on what happened today. Louisville was a point ahead the last time we had Rutgers, Miami, Boston College. Name schedule. They travel to Provo next week to face uh, the Cougars, who are unbeaten going into this weekend. Then Southern Cal here for that great rivalry. Navy a week off. Then Florida State and Boston College. And BYU always tough at home. They have a 55 and 9 record there, including a 4 and 1 mark against teams east of the Mississippi. So, uh, to the 21 yard line. Here's the Florida State schedule if you're looking ahead to the Notre Dame game and uh, they will certainly be heavily favored in the three games they have before making the trip to South Bend. The game against a uh, very good Virginia team this year. Defeated, I believe the last time I saw that and then of course ending the season at Florida that'll be a challenge but I really think that if Florida State is going to be beaten this season, it will be in the cold at Notre Dame. What has to be now the biggest game of the year. Let's take a look now at our Chevrolet players of the game. David Sumner and Pitt and with a tip of the cap to the offensive line of the Irish, who has been dominant today, their All-American tackle, Aaron Taylor. We were told we couldn't name the entire offensive line as the player of the game, but certainly not only Taylor, but Zadavesky and Ruddy and uh, Jeremy Akers, Todd Norman, Mike McGlynn, who got the start today. They were the difference. Well, in conjunction with the program, Chevrolet will contribute $2,000 to the National Association of Student Financial Aid Administrators for disbursement to deserving college students so that they may continue their education. How good is the offensive line of Notre Dame been today? They've been 515 yards and counting good. Robert Farmer, and Majors has already shed the headset. He's uh, suffering through this season, no question, but uh, his team, as we pointed out earlier, did the best they could and hung in there. 13-0 at halftime, they were only down. And you know, Pittsburgh, during one stretch from the mid-70s to the early 80s, went to nine straight bowl games, including that national championship in 76, so that's their site. That's where they want to get back to. Gain. Now, Johnny, though, has really made his living off of rebuilding. He did it at Iowa State, he did it at Pittsburgh, and Tennessee was down when he took over that program. And uh, said earlier, 11 of his last 12 
teams at Tennessee went to bowl games, so he can get it done. A little bitter about uh, his alma mater letting him go after he had the heart surgery. Yes. Score in now from Morgantown in that battle of unbeaten teams as West Virginia prevails over Louisville. Number 24 beats number 17. Final score West Virginia 36, Louisville 34. Two quarterbacks had Notre Dame connections. Jeff Brom of Louisville turning down an invitation to join the Irish. And Jake Keltzner, the quarterback of the Mountaineers of West Virginia, is the transfer from Notre Dame. In the final minute of this game, flags fly. The crowd, the Irish team, a little flat to start the game, but pouring it on in the second half. Encroachment offense. Well, we'll move our attention to the pro ranks coming up tomorrow on NBC. It all starts with NFL Live, 12:30 Eastern Time. Some of you will see Miami and Cleveland. Miami coming off the Monday night win against the Redskins up to face the surprisingly good Cleveland Browns. Others will see Cincinnati take on Kansas City. Then at 4 o'clock, most of you will see the Jets and the Raiders for our regional coverage. Coming up tomorrow here on NBC. <laughs> Closing seconds of the game now. <laughs> And uh, Majors knew that he had very little chance today. Wilson, John. I will call you next week, John. Coach. And John Dockery is there with Coach Holmes. Dockery. Thank you, Coach. Started off a little sluggish, and then the team came on. Was there? Could you feel the momentum changing? Uh, you know, we just sort of hang in there. We didn't play particularly well. We had some mistakes. I don't think we punted the ball all day. Pitts a gutty football team. They played hard. They played Louisville well. It wasn't one of our better days, but we're happy to win. I know you mentioned at halftime the turnover certainly hurt you in the first half. Second half, uh, you, you avoided all that. Well, I think we got a little bit of momentum. It, it isn't a question of focus. You know, sometimes you're just not in sync with there and we weren't the first half uh, we didn't have a great week's practice on offense we did on defense I thought we played pretty well Curtis Martin's a fine back you know you got quarterback productivity from two different guys uh, will you continue to rotate them uh, we probably will you know you just have to go by what you feel in your heart and we weren't getting much going the first half Paul came in did a nice job uh, it's a football team John it it, it isn't going to look pretty but hopefully we're going to end up with a girl <laughs> are you, are you are, were you happy with failure? This is the, seems like the most that Paul Fail has played today. I, I, I thought Paul did a nice job when he's in there. He checked off uh, pretty well. You know, he made some mistakes, but it, it was nice to see him come through and be productive. We're real happy for him. It's a it's a good dilemma to have such talented quarterback. You know, we talked earlier that the pieces were coming together for this team to make a run at, at possibly a national championship. Kicking game, kicking return teams doing their job last week, this week. Our return team has really done a nice job for us. Uh, you know, we're not great in any area, but yet we aren't real bad in any area. But we know one thing. We're going out to play BYU. And, and I, I've heard about how that is to be out there. And we're going to have to take it up another notch. I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Have you heard the score of the Florida State-Miami game? Uh, you know who won? Well, I, I would assume Florida State didn't. If they didn't, then, then you got a real scoop because I think they're a great football team. Yeah. Florida State did uh, did win, by the way, Coach. Good luck down the road. Can we play them later? I, I think there might be a game here in November sometime. Right now, the only thing on our mind is BYU. It's a pleasure. Thank okay. you, John. Okay. All right, Coach Lou Holtz. Uh, <laughs> Do we play them later? What did he say yesterday? He said, uh, we're not a machine yet. We're an inflated football team. If we were on the stock market, short but they looked like a machine in the second half and they wound up with 539 total yards 371 on the ground let's go back to doc 
Yes, I'm with Kevin McDougall. Kevin, uh, congratulations on another win today. Thank you. Uh, you know, we sputtered a little bit today, but uh, I think we came back and it shows what kind of team we have. Uh, we're just playing very well. We're right in the middle of the band here, so this is really live television. What about the situation at quarterback? Um, you didn't get started real well today, and then Fela played some. Was that a motivating factor to you to come back and play well? I think so. I think whenever you have a, you know, you have a letdown a little bit during the game, I think you, you really want to come back and play well, so I think that really helped me. Is it healthy competition, or do you look over your shoulder and say, hey, if I have a bad series, Phelan may be in replacing me? I don't worry about that. I just know if I do my job, everything will take care of itself. I just need to go out and concentrate a little bit more and get things right. Well, good luck down the road. I want to talk to a fellow who had a pretty good game over here, too. Lee Beckton. Thank you, Kevin. Lee, you know, I know earlier in the year you had a little hamstring problem. You got some competition at running back. Everything looked perfect today. Are you totally healthy? Um, well, I'm getting there. I'm not totally healthy, but, um, you know, today I really wanted to compete. And, um, you know, I wanted to come out and uh, test it real good. And uh, so I was running pretty hard today. I just talked to Kevin McDougall about the competition that Lou Holtz sets up at most positions. Quarterback position between Fail and McDougall. Your position, a lot of guys breathing down your neck, especially Randy Kinder. Yeah, it makes, it makes everything better, you know, because everybody plays a lot harder. And um, it, it, it kind of helps out a lot. What about down the road? Florida State won big today against Miami. Um, can the team avoid looking past the BYUs and the USC's to uh, Florida State? Uh, no, we're really not looking past anyone. Um, we have to take them one game at a time. The Florida State game won't mean, you know, as much if we can't win the next two. Well, thank you and congratulations to you. Thank you. Okay, Tom. Well, the 18-12 overture in an encore performance, and the Irish had the cannons booming today in the second half. 31 first downs to five, the final 44-0. Now let's go to Jim Lampley in New York for the Prudential Update Show. Jim?